Well, hello, hello, hello. We are here live back from our river cruise uh, with Riviera Travel. So we've had a fantastic few days with Riviera. So thank you very much for inviting us. And we've had such a great time with them, haven't we? It's been a great couple of days. We were absolutely exhausted with the amount of activities and entertainment that they put on. Uh, we've got to note that we were invited on this two day celebration. It was to celebrate Riviera's 40th anniversary and it was a nice little taster into what river cruising is all about. So if you are here, please give us a thumbs up and pop in in the comments and let us know you are here because uh, we like to know that we are actually live and you can hear us. So please do let us know if you can hear us in the comments, please. Well, I think they can hear us anyway. <laughs> I hope so. So yeah, like Dom said, we were in Paris. We arrived in Paris on the um, Eurostar, which is the first time we'd ever been on the Eurostar. And uh, it was definitely an experience for us. I think Don was expecting um, something exotic on the Euro job, but uh, it was just like being on a train, in all honesty, wasn't it? Very quick and efficient travelling, though, between London and Paris, two and a half hours. You do all of the pre-boarding and immigration uh, at one side, and then you can just get off the train at the other without having to go through anything apart from when you're coming back from Paris but you do have to go through customs at uh, St Pancreas which is quite interesting St Pancreas St Pancreas <laughs> St Pancreas so if you do have any cruise related questions whether it's a Riviera River cruise question or any type of cruise question please pop it in the chat and start it with cruise Start it with cruise? No, <laughs> start it with question in capital letters for us and we could spot it very easily. And we will do our very best to answer all of your cruise related questions. We shall. So let's have a look who's in the chat for us, first of all. Uh, hi, Louise. Lovely to see you. And thank you for letting us know that you can hear us loud and clear. That's very much appreciated that we're not just talking to ourselves. <laughs> Hi, Holly. Lovely to see you. Happy Easter. Well, happy Easter to you very much. Uh, looking forward to chatting with you again as well. Yeah, we very much appreciate everybody that's come to see us on this very, very busy Easter Saturday. <laughs> we know everyone is very busy today. Sisters on the seas, Lizzie and Laura. I don't know if it's both of you or one of you, uh, but uh, hello to you. Nice to see that you can hear us also. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, April. Lovely to see you. And uh, great. Thank you once again for saying you can hear us. So like we said, if you've got any cruise related questions, please pop those in the chat for us. Um, so we're going to tell you what we thought a little bit about um, our river cruise, first of all. So as we've always done ocean ships and ocean ships are much, much larger than a river cruise. It was quite a surprise for us and quite different to get onto a river ship. Now, the river ship we were on was um, a Riviera ship, um, although um, we hadn't been on any other ships, but we managed to see quite a few there while we were uh, in Paris. So quite a few coming past us. There was a Viva ship docked next to us. So we did get quite a good overview of all the different types of river ship available. And yes, they are much smaller than ocean, like I said. And Paris seems to be sort of like a little epicenter for river cruises. So if you're looking to travel the Seine, Seine, the Seine, yeah. Seine uh, then it's obviously a, a brilliant destination to sort of travel to and from. And as we said, get into Paris, especially with the Eurostar, incredibly quick and easy. Really, really easy. It took about two and a half hours in it uh, but the problem was when we arrived in Paris that the traffic in Paris itself was ridiculous wasn't it never seen anything like it I know they're preparing for the Olympics this year because if you didn't know Paris is hosting the 2024 Olympics mm. and there just seem to be so many different building construction works roads everywhere closed it was incredibly busy and I can quite I honestly say I've never seen anything like it. In order to travel, I think about seven miles, it took us an hour and a half on the coach. It was insane. It was insane. Yeah, Paris was a, definitely an experience, wasn't it? Paul? I dread, I, I would hate to drive around Paris because it was, it was just like everybody was cutting in front of you. It was, in, it was just incredible. It was, it was. <laughs> I'm quite fortunate to be on the coach. Uh, and I 
I think that's probably where the beauty of the Rivership came in because when we got back on the Rivership, it was kind of serene, Sweet, wasn't calm. it? We had a bit of calm um, compared to the madness that was Paris. Now, when we arrived on uh, the Rivership, we were allocated our cabin and we were very, very surprised at the size of the cabin. It was a very, very good size, probably comparable to that, what we've had on the ocean. Oh, yeah, absolutely. In terms of square footage uh, and storage space, it was incredible, really. As we said, we never sort of been on a river cruise ship before. And, you know, they are a lot smaller. We were on the MS Jane Austen and yeah. she's only three decks or three accessible decks for passengers. So much, much smaller. And, and yeah, really surprised at just the amount of storage space. Uh, there was a good size bed in there. The bathroom was very compact, but I wouldn't say it was too small. No, it was Perfect for what we needed it for, for the few days that we were on board. And obviously the highlight of the cabin had to be that French balcony where we could sit, open the doors right up and then look out um, over the river. Uh, beautiful, really, really nice to do that. Um, yeah, it was great to, just to watch all of the activity on the river because we genuinely couldn't believe it. People were sort of popping their cars on on little tugs and boats and just shipping them from one end of the river to the other. It was just a really serene incredible experience it was okay so let's see who else is in the chat then because we've been uh, battling on <laughs> so we've got rose bruce hi nice to hi, meet rose. you uh, sweet natured hello oh sweet natured lovely to see you oh we're looking forward to your live tomorrow to see what you thought uh, about some princess yes oh yeah we noticed that earlier and we were like oh, we've got to join in so we'll see you there uh we've got a question from holly at holiday at sea how did the food and choice of food options service compare to ocean cruising? Now, um, on a river ship, well, on this river ship in particular, there was only one rest main dining room. So obviously much, much more limited in terms of choice. However, the food that we had was of exceptional quality, probably some of the best food we've had. The service was top notch. I don't think our drink ever went empty. There was constantly constantly being topped up and um, we were offered drinks constantly the well you, it, wherever you are on the ship you are two steps away from the bar so i don't think you could ever no. not get <laughs> served anywhere the staff were incredibly attentive even down to sort of dietary requirements and they were sort of overly concerned uh just making sure that everybody had exactly what they needed and sort of didn't or couldn't eat they were very good at that and in terms of service you know, we couldn't fault them at all. The service in the main restaurants, the service in the main lounge bar area was incredible, really. As Tom said, you know, you, as soon as your drink started to sort of run dry, they straight there topping you, topping you back up. It was incredible service. In yeah. terms of the food choices. Yeah. So breakfast was a, a buffet style breakfast where you could get a, a red range of hot and cold food yeah. you know your traditional continental breakfast and your full english and then you could also order sort of your eggs uh in addition to that from the kitchen excuse me fresh juices such so fresh fruit lovely sort of pastries uh, uh were prepared in the mornings and it was a kind of you just go in find an empty table sit down and then you can go up and serve yourself coffee was sort of brought to your table a uh, very very good so Collection in the main dining in the dining room for breakfast yeah and for our evening meals as we were only on board two nights we had one gala meal with a taster menu so we got to try everything on the menu a little selection of everything and everything we had was fantastic that was the first night on board and our second night on board we had a, a standard cruise menu where you can choose a starter a main and a dessert and once again those food qualities were excellent there was a better choice of four in each section so four starters four mains four desserts normally a meat choice a fish choice a vegetarian choice so lots for everybody there and uh, i'm not a big lover of lamb but on the second night i did choose choose the lamb and it was beautiful i thoroughly enjoyed it and as i said i am not a lamb lover at all <laughs> I but don't, it no. was delicious really good really good i think the food throughout the sort of two days was really really good standard but I got to stop saying really, really. It was, it was, <laughs> it was very, really, really, it was really, really. It was a good standard, very good quality, and yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. What I did like 
was unlike sort of larger cruise ships, everybody has dinner together. So uh, pretty much around about, I think it was for 7.30, everybody made their way down to the restaurant to have dinner. And that was just quite a nice sort of experience because people you've been on the ship with, people you've been out on excursions with, you're all just sat there together eating and enjoying some really great food. And I, I really like that. Yeah. OK, let's have a look. What else we've got in the question? Oh, I've got a scroller. <laughs> get with it holly uh, you know how much i love my fit we did and holly your your son princess with rudy. Uh, with rudy oh we've watched that a few times now because you're just watching your face when you see him behind you that's brilliant <laughs> uh david webb oh okay with some vision hello all just finished work hello david thank hello, you for joining david. Us. and uh, i can see you've got a picture of the bridge in rotterdam i think it is as your profile picture so i'd have to go really close <laughs> <laughs> tell us if we're wrong yeah Question, has this experience made you want to do a longer river cruise now or will you stick to ocean cruising? What do you think, Don? I think it was a nice taster, but because it was a celebration event, there was a lot of activities and things put on through the day. So pretty much as soon as we arrived to when we left, there was always something going on, which was fantastic. We knew why we were there, you know, to celebrate 40 years of Riviera. But it would be good to go back and perhaps do a more traditional river cruise yeah. uh, for, for sort of seven days, because I think we'd really enjoy it. Because the impression we got, it's a very sort of relaxed atmosphere. It's very port intensive. Um, so the time you are on the ship, you're sort of rejuvenating and recouping from sort of visiting some of these spectacular destinations. Yeah, I think... Uh when you are sailing in somewhere so beautiful out on the river we could feel the calm just by having our um, french balcony doors open and just sitting there we had two chairs in our cabin that we could sit on to look out uh, across the river and just sitting there we thought oh we can imagine ourselves here longer so i think definitely we'd like to do a longer river cruise and it's a little bit different to sort of your larger cruise ships because yes you can sort of separate yourself go and sit down you know go to places like the retreat or the adult only area to sort of have a bit of calm and a bit of quiet but if you like us we don't want to miss out on anything so it's a kind of case that we are always so busy when we're on a cruise ship and on a river ship yes there's loads to do in terms of at your destinations there's entertainment on of an evening but it's just a little bit more of a relaxing slower pace um and i think we'd quite like that yeah definitely definitely uh would we uh, uh stick to, i think there's a place in our sort of cruising arsenal for for two i think we, we <laughs> quite, yeah i think because we thoroughly enjoy cruising we really did enjoy our little two nights on riviera it was an incredible experience that you know and we're very thankful that we were invited so um much much appreciated i think we definitely do both oh yeah, yeah. No, absolutely both. good evening from the black country oh what a lovely place you're in <laughs> <laughs> where in the black country let me know that would be interesting to know um, I hope the weather's been as nice as it's been here for everybody because it's been a really nice day today we've had a couple nice. of sort of of spring showers but the sun's been out warmer than it has been definitely warmer so summer's coming fingers crossed um catherine rees thank you for joining us good evening both from a sunny south wales see oh, well see. you can't be too far right because me and dom have been in uh swansea, swansea this morning yeah. so uh we might have passed you what part of south wales are you from trying to make the garden look a bit more colorful but we really wanted to look at cruises for 2026 happy east to both oh did you see our post from igloo this week there's some uh, exciting cruises uh coming up in 2026 i'll so have a little look at that um yeah no definitely i think today has definitely been the time for those that needed to do their gardening to get out there and make the most of this weather absolutely so uh, well done Kat. not us though no we haven't done any gardening no. today <laughs> 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 oh oh right oh i'm gonna try and pronounce this now go on Belmol Thalmola. Oh, I'm sorry. so sorry for Thank that. you for joining us, though. <laughs> Much appreciate it. You know, one thing that me and Dom did, we put out a video, on the, well, as we do every week, but there's always something we pronounce wrong. So Bayou. we always have to apologize. Yeah, in our, we had an island princess, uh, we pronounced it Bayou. No, Bayou. Bayou, Bayou. Bayou. Anyway, we had someone from, say, um, 
safe part of the USA correct us on how we said that. And obviously, as you can tell, we still can't get it right. So we, we do, do try. try. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Becky, thank you from Southern California. 20 te- 25 days until you board Island Princess. Oh, you'll have a fantastic What a time. treat. Oh, what a good ship that was. We absolutely loved our Island Princess cruise. Yeah, not too big, not too small and still adds so much going on yeah. really really enjoyed it and definitely we'd uh, sort of make the most of it and go on her again yeah and i think andy cruise director andy is still on board so uh if you get a chance to meet andy he's fantastic no, so very good you'll have a great time i'm sure sweet natured question did you, did you notice if there were tables for two at dinner or were they all sharing tables uh, interesting question. Now, the tables were all set up for sharing, whether they were four, six, or eight on the because I didn't see any tables for two at all. No. Um, that's not to say you probably couldn't sit at a table of four, just the two of you, because I think there was spare tables. So the restaurant was never full at any time. So I'm sure they could accommodate two if you really wanted to sit um, as the two but most of the tables were sharing uh, for our time on board we were sort of table hopping so on night one we had a select group of people and then they'd mix the tables up again for night two just to get a guest chat into other people well i think it was quite a nice experience because yeah. normally we'll just always ask for a table for two not that we're sort of being rude or yeah. you know it's just for filming filming wise. really yeah. um and yeah it was it was an interesting experience uh, but in terms of specific tables for two, we didn't spot any. Oh, it's been lovely in Birmingham today. Oh, lovely. Have you been sunning yourself, girls? Because I know how much you like to uh, sunbathe or not. <laughs> I don't think it's been hot enough for sunbathing. No. Right? Definitely not. Um, get your arms out. <laughs> yeah. David. Yes, it's the Erasmus Bridge. You know by the locals. Uh, as the Swan Bridge. Do you know what? Here's oh, an interesting sorry. thing. We watched some, another vlogger's uh, video on Rotterdam today, um, someone who was on the cruise with us um, on our last Rotterdam cruise, and we did not know today, it, no matter how many times we've been to Rotterdam, that bridge actually lifts opens. up, opens. We we've, never, we've never seen We've been under the bridge. We've been over the bridge. <laughs> we've been looking at that reach from the ship i don't know how many times. times and not once we'd ever seen it open we literally had to pause and rewind because right. we couldn't that believe bridge lift you know, what's going on yeah but yeah no incredible so, really. there we go so you learn something new every <laughs> day every day um catherine oh thank you for joining us catherine do you have a bucket list cruise ship or itinerary i'm in a stragun life oh we've been to swansea this morning yeah so you give me a, a welsh place name like pretty, pretty good a stragun <laughs> Bucket uh, list cruise. Go for yours first. Uh, so I would love to do Australia and New Zealand. I've said it so many times. I would just love to be able to get out there. But in terms of timings, it's just incredibly difficult. Um, but it's just one place I always want to go just travel in between around australia and then over to new zealand for a few stops it would be i just think it'd be incredible but then equally there are so many amazing places <laughs> this you can get list to is getting bigger, bigger, and bigger. And bigger and bigger i think the more you cruise the more you sort of visit um these individual sort of mm. ports that are extreme and out the way like our greenland cruise it just sort of opens your eyes to the potential of just experiencing exactly what this world has to offer. So in terms of bucket list cruise, I think I desperately want to do Australia and New Zealand. Yeah. But I desperately want to do a whole host of other ones. <laughs> like I'd love to go to the Antarctic. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, that'd be incredible. You could you? go on and on, couldn't you? I could. Um, French Polynesia for ocean oh, ship. Yeah. Definitely love to do that. Um, we watched the... Susan Kalman on Windstar. Yes, please. Top of the list. Love to do that. And then river cruise wise, I would love to go to Egypt to do a night cruise. Well, we were kind of halfway there on our Riviera trip because one of our excursions included a visit to an interactive Egyptian light show yeah. type thing, which was in- interesting. Um, but I do like ancient Egypt history, so I think I would enjoy that cruise. Mm. Okie dokie. That was a good attempt at me. I know. Girls, so I can... <laughs> oh, appreciate that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm oh. not going to attempt it again. No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Louise. Louise. 
question was there a shared sun terrace on the top deck i've heard that there are a big hit on river cruises uh yes there was a well the the top deck was a full sun deck really but what it did have that actually shocked us apart from tables chairs and sun lounges there was a little mini golf um, on the top with three holes that you could go around and do that so that definitely would be interesting on a nice sunny day to play and also a little splash pool slash hot tub so the facilities are actually really, really nice good. um on this cruise we were docked during the day and we sailed during the night past, uh, to look at the eiffel tower so we sat definitely used the the top sun deck in a not so sunny <laughs> environment because we were there at night um but it was fantastic yeah, there are plenty of sun lounges. There's some shaded areas at the very front of the ship. There was kind of like a, a seating area with nice, comfortable seats where you could just sit back and relax. And, you know, we could imagine ourselves sort, sort of cruising down the river and just sat there sipping a, a nice cold drink or a cocktail. It was nice. It was very, very nice. And uh, and then towards the back, they had a little splash pool. Did you say about the splash pool? Yes, a little yeah. splash pool. And then um, a little seat in Terry's area as well just outside of the aft uh, bistro area yeah for a small ship plenty of outdoor space we were really really well, i said it again really <laughs> really we were impressed with the amount of outdoor space and on a beautiful sunny day i think we definitely made most of it while we were there in paris the weather was well, i wouldn't say it was awful yeah it just wasn't amazing there was a bit of rain no no it was fine though it, it, was, was, it wasn't too cold uh, but definitely not warm enough to get up there and uh, sunbathe. No, no. Thimola. Uh -huh. okay. Good attempt at my name. I'm just rewatching all your Iceland cruise and getting loads of ideas on, on what to do. Just about to book Forest Lagoon. How long do you think you need there? Oh, so the Forest Lagoon, I think they give you three hours, don't they? They allocate you a time. So um, it's not up to you, really. Well, you can have less time there, but the maximum time you can have is three hours. And uh, it probably takes i'd give yourself an hour to get there as well even though there's a complimentary shuttle bus from the oh the oh, tourist information say, the center. hop center but it it's is, not is, that's in <laughs> uh from from the center anyway from where you you'll see it from when you dock the ship so there's a complimentary bus that picks you up On takes you um straight across the water um and you you're at the forest lagoon but just gives yourself enough time but it worked uh, out really well yeah. for us Forest Lagoon is, is an incredible sort of excursion. It's very sort of low key at the minute. So you will get there and you will see a lot of sort of staff from the cruise ship as well as the vast majority. And there will be locals using the facilities. Yeah, it's not popular with um, cruise ship um, passengers at the moment because a lot of them do other things in the Akiri area, whether that's well watching or, or heading up to church or going on a, a an excursion further away yeah um it's not really promoted that much the forest lagoon so it is a great tip because it is definitely nowhere near as busy as any of the other lagoons further south in iceland like the blue lagoon uh, which is my secret lagoon we've already done as well yeah that was good so i think you're going to have a fantastic time there try all the different pools the, the sauna <laughs> yeah, the gold pool get a swim up um <laughs> not the swim up bar drink um it's just a great place to relax and enjoy the views there you might even spot a whale in the water so it's great what in the thermal water not in the thermal water <laughs> over, the, over the side in the um <laughs> talking in the about fjord me? in the fjord. <laughs> Um, equally, you know, we have done well watching excursion in Akiri and it was incredible. We were so lucky that day. Yeah. So lucky because on our last last year when we went, uh, a lot of people did the same excursion that we did the year previous and they didn't see anything. No. So it doesn't matter where you go. Well watching, I think in Iceland, it's a bit of hit, hit and miss. Hit and miss. But Akiri is one of our absolute favourite places in Iceland, as we said, twice now. And I think it, it's better than Reykjavik. Do you yeah, I think it's a little bit more catered towards tourists in terms of like you've got those little photo opportunity statues with I yeah. love. Even uh, the little uh, traffic lights with the hearts on. Yeah. <laughs> red, the red light is a heart in uh, Akuari, which is lovely. Really good to say. Your photos were stunning of the Altifold Tower in Paris. It was really, I was going to say, 
again <laughs> so the, on our first night it was formal night so we had to, we were all dressed suited and booted yes and um, they had a little special event so we had had our dinner we'd had a few drinks in the lounge bar and then the ship got what move in towards the Eiffel Tower for the light display. So the light display happens every hour, is every it? Every hour, yeah. Um, and it was just incredible to sit there and watch. They'd sort of prepared an area at the front of the ship. Uh, so everybody was at the front of the ship, just sat there watching uh, this beautiful light display. Because I've been to Paris before, but only when I was in school. So this is my second time. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so we, we sailed towards the... Um, statue of liberty which we yeah, didn't know there was no. a statue of liberty in paris that in it, anywhere I mean, it's quite bigger than that yeah but. i think it's about is it a third of the size maybe even smaller and uh yeah we sailed towards that so as the statue of liberty looked at us we could then look out over to the eiffel tower and see it sparkle and that was really something special wasn't it so no, really man he said it again <laughs> uh, yeah it was it was it was a beautiful experience especially you know everybody was sat there in sort of their finery we were sipping prosecco and champagne it was just a great experience and again we felt very fortunate to be able to to do that really um but yeah no i loved it yeah and we can only imagine uh, all the other views you could enjoy from a river ship there okay questions so if you do have any more questions please pop uh, the questions in the chat um, and we will get to them as quick as we can so thank you very much april for your question question how many people on board so there's roughly around 200 um guests on board a riviera ship and uh, it did not feel crowded at all at any point um for us most of the time in the evenings everybody was in the uh, bar lounge area and there was still plenty of space yeah yeah there was it, you didn't feel so you know on larger cruise ships especially sort of the really big cruise ships when there are 6,000 people on there. You you know there's 6,000 people on there because you can walk around uh, and you're sort of moving from one venue to another to see if you can find somewhere mm -hmm. to sit. Even though the ship was pretty much full, mm -hmm. it was, um, you know, it wasn't difficult to find a seat, to get any service from, from the bar staff. They were really, it was, it was incredible, really, considering, uh, you know, that we've had experiences in the past where, you know, you, you haven't been able to see, you haven't definitely not been able to get a drink because it was just so busy. No, no, yeah, it was great, wasn't it? Really great. Were there any spa facilities on board? Thank you, Louise, for your question. Now, there were actually a small spa area that was right at the bottom of the ship. Yeah, on deck, on deck one. one. Yeah, on deck one. So a small area. There's a few cabins on deck one for passengers passengers and then the crew cabins but also there then is a little spa area where there's um, a couple of seats and a spa treatment area and that's it really but it is there if you want to make use of it unfortunately we didn't have time to we would have loved to have gone in there actually and see what they offered um, but the spa facilities are there so it's really surprised us because everywhere we looked on this ship we discovered something extra um, like they have a little water station where you can get drinks they have a hot drink station after the ship in the um the bistro area uh, it's just it's just a beautiful little place with so much crammed into such a small area another example they've got a little shop on board yeah. that they seem to sell everything you need and more really or souvenirs postcards toiletries everything like that so lots of thing facilities on board that you wouldn't imagine that could fit into such a small ship. Yeah, and the ship itself was beautiful. I know, um, like this, they've got this lovely little aft bistro area where on traditional river cruises, they'll serve sort of like fish and chips and and, and just sort of, you know, your standard food, but had a beautiful little seating area out the back as well that was outside. Uh, and on a sunny day, that would have been a beautiful area of the ship to sort of make use of. Yeah, yeah, definitely um, it would have been lovely. I think it's uh, the whole ship would have been nice in a warmer climate. I think where we could have uh, sat. Back uh, and yeah, true. But in terms of the the weather, it didn't sort of disrupt our our two days. Yeah, you yeah. know, it just meant that we couldn't sit out on the top deck. But in terms of being inside, it was pretty pretty great, really. 
Now, um, I know that I had a couple of questions come through as well from um, someone who can't join us now, whose name escapes me, but I'll look in a second. Um, and they asked us about the secret places on board Island Princess, and could we talk about those? Yeah, of course, no problem. So uh, there were a few actual places you could get those fantastic views. So when we cruised through um, Prince, Prince Christian Sound, we managed to get some scenic views. And um, when we spoke to some of our fellow passengers on board, and even people who've spoken to us afterwards, um, have you been on Island Prince, they'd never discovered these secret places. Now, they're located right at the front on decks 10 and 11. Correct. Decks 10 and 11 at the front. And there's also a secret place at the back you can go to, which is deck eight. eight. <laughs> Thank you, John, for doing the ship tour and remembering those places. So um, it's definitely worth spending some time out there. Now, there's nowhere to sit in no. these places. It is only standing areas, but it's definitely some of the best views you're going to get. If you're especially if you're doing a scenic cruise like we did i think you're going to have a fantastic view whether you're at the front or the back in any of those secret areas yeah there are i think in particular my favorite was the one on deck eight towards the aft uh, of deck eight and again you know equally for ones on 10 and 11 it is a door it doesn't look like you can just freely walk through but you can yeah uh, the one on deck eight aft is pretty much one of the only places on the ship that you can get sort of an an interrupted wake view because unfortunately at the top on deck oh god i can't remember deck uh, 14 15 is the retreat yeah so and, and that's sort of an exclusive area that you have to pay to access so if you do want any type of sort of wake view you know deck eight is the place to go and do that that's it and as tom said that we reason why we call them the secret areas because they're not on any no. of the deck plans they're not labeled on any of the signage on the ship no you just have to channel and sit and go through this or as long as it doesn't say crew only yeah, go for go for it, it, yeah. it? Crew so, only. if it says crew only don't, do don't it. go through it but all the others give it a try okay so this is on the seas ask is there anything included in the cruise fare in terms of drinks or is it a separate drinks package now uh riviera has just changed this actually so previously it was a separate pay as you go option but now now, all their reviews come with drinks packages as standard, and the drinks choice was fantastic. We would say we've been on ocean ships that do not have the standard of drinks choices that this ship had. Um, so, yeah, fantastic. And the, the options and the service, like we said, was fantastic. Yeah, uh, the, the choice, the quality of the spirits, the quality of the beers, the champagne, the Prosecco, uh, was top notch yeah. really good quality drinks and to have that included in your fear just makes things a little bit sort of simpler i know you know those of you that regularly watch our channel will know that myself and tom we tend to always go for sort of a drinks package because then we can have what we want we don't have to worry about a huge bill at the end of the cruise it's all sorted and just to have that sort of simplicity mm -hmm. and peace of mind really because you know, I don't want to be sat there on any type of cruise where I'm basically monitoring my daily spend because, you know, these cruises, these trips away, as much as we do them as often as we can, um, they are our holiday yeah. um, because we both have full time jobs and we try and squeeze and squeeze this in. So just having a package, having everything included just makes life a lot simpler and easier. You can just sit back and relax then. Um, well, a question that I wanted to ask everybody in the chat really is about their Easter eggs because I put this on our <laughs> Facebook page yesterday. I put this on our Facebook page yesterday, and everyone said they hadn't eaten any Easter eggs yet. So that actually has made me feel really guilty for eating an Easter egg already. So please let me know if I am alone and have already succumbed to the Easter egg chocolate, or have you all <laughs> eaten an Easter egg? Does a uh, can, uh, can, uh, does a Cadbury's cream egg count though? Is it any strange? Mm, it's controversial. Mm. Yeah. Well, um, we'll say yes because <laughs> uh, I can't believe how many people have said they have not eaten an Easter egg yet. So well done to all those <laughs> uh, people with excellent uh, willpower. Oh, Becky, she's going through the Panama Canal. Oh, that'd be incredible. So yeah, secret areas sound perfect. Yeah, definitely those places. Um, just get there, get yourself, if, well, depending on the weather, I suppose, yeah. just get yourself in the right outfit for whatever the weather's going to be and spend as much time as you can out there because we virtually spent the whole, 
all day when we go through Prince Christian Sound out there. We and, spent, what, five minutes in the buffet and ran back out. <laughs> That's true. Uh, in terms of the secret areas, though, yeah, on our cruise, when we were going through the Prince Christian Sound, the whole ship was geared up for it. We had a, a live guide talking us through as we were going through, all the way through. She was live talking us through every single step of the way. So the whole ship was geared up. All the passengers knew we're going through the Prince Christian Sound. Yet yeah, these secret areas were some of the quietest on the ship. Everybody else was on the top, surrounding the pool deck, um, and we were right at the front of the ship, taking it all in. It was incredible, so definitely make use of it. And, you know, we do say, you know, it was quiet, but obviously, you know, secrets don't stay secret forever, no. especially when you blog about them and, <laughs> put them and ship tours and things like that. Yeah. But I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be, yeah, uh, it'll be, be fine. great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, that's life. Thank you for joining us. This was a fabulous opportunity. How did you get invited? Would you book a cruise with Riviera? So, yeah, we uh, we had a lovely invite sent to us through our email address from the team at Riviera, Riviera should I say. No, we hadn't done anything with Riviera before, um, but we were happily, happily wanting to try a river cruise. So, of course, we took them up on the opportunity. Um, there's many, many opportunities. Well, I'd over-exaggerate that. There is a few opportunities that we've had that we have just haven't been able to do because um, Dom's a teacher, so we are quite restricted on when and when we can't do things. So, so this fell perfectly in a time when we could. Yeah, I was off for Easter holidays. So, so uh, yeah, just the day before you were off. So we managed to head down um, and catch the Euro style over, as we said. So, yeah, fantastic. So it dropped into our email, um, which we're very grateful for. So thank you for the team at Riviera for inviting us. Um, would we book a Riviera cruise now? Uh, absolutely i think riviera were wonderful that we got talking to many of the um many of the team from riviera from back up from the office as well and they were all just so lovely and the way in which they interacted with each other as well you could see that they actually really enjoyed working for the company yeah um, so we'd be very very confident in that they would create an absolute amazing um holiday for us whether that is a riviera cruise or they also do lots of land tours as well um it was just in, right. it was a great experience because we also learned about the history of the company as well and how they started with a sort of a camping trip to the south of france 40 years ago pa they went to paris as yeah. well yeah so which is why they went back to paris is because that, that was one of their first trips that they did was to paris um so we were kind of reliving that um although there wasn't a euro star and things like that involved in those days um and they're sort of branching out into the us as well mm. trying to increase their sort of uh, cruises and customer base in the united states so you know it's quite an exciting time for them and i think what they what their offer is 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 quite appealing really for for those people that like to sort of get immersed in destinations. I think it's and very trips. good, very good value for and money. Very, yeah, a river cruise does tend to be a little bit more pricey than an ocean cruise, in all honesty, but given the size of the ships and what you get, we found it was good value for money. Um, Chris PNW. Oh, nice to see you, Chris. Thank you for joining us. Help. I can't keep up with your whereabouts any longer. Well, Chris, we are currently sat in, uh, <laughs> in South Wales. <laughs> Well, in South West Wales, in Pembrokeshire, um, and we are here now for a few weeks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, well, yeah, 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 and then we'll be off again, most probably. Yeah, so uh, we are firmly rooted here for the next few weeks. So we're, that's where we are. <laughs> I think it does confuse a lot of people, though, doesn't it? When we're posting on Instagram about cruises that we've been on, it does. So we tend to post in time with our vlogs quite often. So when you see our general static Instagram posts, Facebook posts, not our stories, um, it tends to be what relates to the content that we're putting out at that time. Or, for example, for today, it was about Easter because it's Easter. Um, whereas um, normally stories and things like that tend to be live as we're going along. So you'll, you'll, that's where you'll see the difference. Yeah, it is. It is tricky, though, because it can be tricky. You know, it's, it's a lot of content going on. There's a lot of content out there. Right, look at Holly now. I can see this going. Holly's had a cream egg. Wonderful. I'm, Say, I'm three. I feel that I am <laughs> vindicated and not being the only person to have eaten Easter eggs. 
Laura. Laura, Laura can't lie. I ate one on Wednesday, so gave him pretty early. There we go. <laughs> we've been, we've well, we've done kind of well. We've only bought one each this Easter. Morning. One each and ten cream eggs yesterday. And ten cream eggs. So they were on <laughs> offer in Tesco's. You can't, you can't be thirty uh, p an egg. You can't be that for yeah, cream so egg. So get down to Tesco because they've got <laughs> yeah. a brilliant offer on before they close tomorrow. <laughs> Um, April, no Easter eggs, but many peanut M and M's. Spring coloured. I do love peanut M and M's though. A peanut M and M's, yeah. I haven't done. We've had a peanut M and M for ages. Not, not for a long time. Spring coloured though. I'm interested to know what they are. Um, I suppose because in the in the US they've got like millions of different varieties of M and M's, haven't mm. they? Yeah. My favourite are the pretzel ones in chocolate. Perhaps you can get them in the one in Leicester Square. Maybe. It's a square. Yeah, the oh, M&M yeah, world. M&M, M&M world. M&M world. No, it's expensive. Yeah. There's a long way to go for an M&M. <laughs> it is a long way to go for an M&M. <laughs> Chris PNW, between all your social media accounts, can you say what coast is current past? But yeah, this okay. true. Yeah. So I should put something in that that says, um, I'll, I'll think about how I can make that more clear. So uh, I'll try, I'll try Chris. It's that, it is difficult, though, because I suppose, because... The, the vlogs take so long you know it takes it takes about a, a week to do one video because obviously we've got to fit this into normal everyday right, full-time job and yeah. life yeah you know cooking cleaning um every, everything so it does take a while to do one video i would love to just be able to just snap my fingers now <laughs> an entire vlog series just <laughs> done and i just push it out um but i'm unfortunately it just takes so long so yeah we have got a bit of a, a little bit of a backlog we are releasing our aurora content because that was at new year's new year and we think that that needs to go out first because it is such a specialized sort of cruise because you know we specifically chose to do a new year's eve cruise um so yeah that's that's going to go out and our first vlog of that cruise will be out on monday so embarkation yeah, so embarkation day and that was certainly an interesting experience um our embarkation didn't go, go to plan. Um, Aurora hit some snags. Yeah, some bad weather on the way down to Southampton for our cruise. That meant we were all sat in the terminal a little bit delayed, but we'll tell you all about that in our vlog rather than me recount the <laughs> whole, whole story now. Um, but yeah, it's out on Monday, our first Aurora vlog, and there will be how many episodes we got? Five? There'll be five of them. Five episodes so, of that. Yeah. yeah. And then we're going to do Costa because I am so desperate to share Costa with everybody. Yeah. Because it was a great seven day, seven night cruise. Yeah. Thoroughly enjoyed Very it. Very different to anything we've been before. So when you watch our Costa vlogs, you'll see that it is completely different. Everything is laid out, how the days flow are different to. Yeah, and they're, end of the cruise. Yeah, their structure. But it, it was just an incredible week, and we would go on again. We are actively looking to go on again. Yeah, a, yeah. a Costa ship, and you know, I I think they they have a little bit of a bad rep, but great we, value for money. We had a fantastic time, really yeah. did. Um, so yeah, but back to sorry, Chris. We sort of uh, digressed. Yeah. We will sort of try and look at condensing and containing things. To just make it easier because it, you know you're not that you, you're not the the first or the only one to have mentioned no that. no um, okay right here we go what have we got here shared a mini egg easter egg yesterday but that's okay because greek easter is not until the 5th of may so it's kind of a late well what, 5th of may that's ages away that's plenty of time to eat easter eggs well, between then and then <laughs> 5th of may it's not March. Oh no, we got April first. <laughs> so uh, oh, I didn't know that Greek Easter is not until the fifth of May. That's mm, that's probably is that like a uh, proper Orthodox Easter? I don't know, but um, well, okay. So uh, yeah, that's okay. We'll go with it. Everything's fine as long as you've eaten it. I'm going with that. Well, it's just a little treat in it. We've all <laughs> got treat. hard lives and work, and then you know, a little bit of a chocolate treat. Nobody's gonna no, tell no. you off for that. Uh, well, here's our uh, cruise companions, Sisters on the Seas. Uh, we're desperate to see Costa Vlogs too, looking forward to those. So, yeah, the sisters have already done a brief, uh, I've done some Costa Vlogs. So, have a little look at those while you're waiting for ours. In fact, they, <laughs> they give you a little update uh, of what they got up to on Costa. And no spoilers, we, we do make a cameo or two. We do make a cameo <laughs> or two uh, in their vlogs. Yeah, we definitely do. And I'm sure they'll make a cameo or two in ours. Yeah. yeah. 
So great, great. So yeah, talking about um, uh, Costa, um, the ship itself obviously is yellow, and the decoration inside is uh, it's <laughs> I said it mm. right. it's different. It certainly is different, um, but. I think it's like one of those things you get used to when you're on board and you're into that atmosphere of it. And the sisters will tell you that we had such a great time on there. Um, the Costa ships just work, worked in a way that we didn't expect them no. to, I don't think. And I also thought, because we've done a couple of MSC, and yeah, nothing wrong with MSC. You get what you pay for with MSC. But the service on Costa is, a is you know, I, I see Costa as like, the Italian piano, yeah, yeah, fair, fair. In yeah. terms of the 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 the, the, the yeah. service, you know, it was table service for drinks. You could sit down, and somebody would come to you straight away. Yeah, and no drinks limits either. No, that was good. So um, that, that was, was very good. <laughs> not that we went absolutely wild, but it was uh, it was nice to be not have. Oh, you need to wait fifteen minutes. That's true. Not that we drink everything in fifteen minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. No. <laughs> <laughs> but. No, it's just good. It's good to have the option. And yeah. the fact that they'd allow you to use your drinks package on the last day of your cruise. That was good as that. On your disembarkation day. So, yeah, that was great. Absolutely good. And the drinks package, I think, is £420 for a week. Yeah. Which does sound a lot. Okay. If you sort of whip it down, still good fun there. Uh, uh, Sweet Nature are asking, would you fancy a Christmas market river cruise? That's the one that keeps calling to us absolutely we would love to do that the only thing that stops us doing it is dom <laughs> um but yeah we would love to go on board a christmas river cruise. i think it would just have a different feeling particularly those german those german market right. river cruises on the rhine perhaps yeah um i think they would be fantastic because i think feel on board and the feeling the different ports along the road we're well, just going and visiting all of those traditional christmas markets would be yeah. incredible um, no, it's something definitely we'd like to do. Obviously, they start mid November, don't they? Yeah, and then they'll go all the way up until yeah. We when we were in Hamburg, we just missed because uh, we were there for New Year, but in Germany, the Christmas market finishes Christmas Eve, doesn't it? So that is the last, the last day, and then they pack away. So it's a uh, it's a bit of a shame. A bit of a shame. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Chris's comment. We we'll get to it. <laughs> Put it on the screen. <laughs> oh, there's just a Ken Gogs cruising. Ken, uh, thank, uh, no worries. Thank you for joining us. Oh, uh, Ken and Lindsay, lovely to see you. We saw that on our Aurora cruise as well. Yeah, and we're enjoying your um, Fred Olsen Fred series. Olsen series yeah, they've, uh, they've got a great Fred Olsen series on at the really moment uh, that we're enjoying. So, Chris, several YouTube bloggers have recently decided to make their channel a full time effort. Could you sell your Bentley yeah. and country home to go full time? <laughs> Um, I work with sponsorship. Somebody'd uh, have to buy me a Bentley in a country home first, but yeah, no. Yeah, definitely. yeah. I don't. <laughs> I don't think that we would. Uh, yeah. Well, look, look. Oh, well, well. Put that on screen there. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris. That is ten dollars towards much our full time Thank employment you. into blogging, um, or towards, like Dom said, a Bentley to sell to then put <laughs> Okay. Um, oh, no, very, very, very kind of you. Thank you, Chris. Much, much appreciated. Much appreciated. But yes, um, yes, some vloggers have gone full time. We would love to be able to do it full time. Mm. Um, at the moment, um, we are nowhere near earning anywhere near enough to be able to do that in all on day, isn't it? True. So um, it's it's not an easy life. It's an enjoyable one. It's an enjoyable one. It's definitely one that's a privilege because oh, it's yeah. uh, so we get to do things that obviously we know other people would love to do. So we are very well aware of that. But um, yeah, definitely not full time earnings for us, yes. But we're ten dollars closer now, thanks to Chris. <laughs> thank you. So thank you very much. It's fab. Did Xmas River Cruise Amsterdam to Budapest with ABT, APT Luxury River Cruise? Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, no, I've looked at APT and they look like they've got a really nice product as well. I keep looking at these things, these river cruises. I think it was because the clear, the clear river cruise um, gathering was a couple of weeks ago now, wasn't it? And that I kept seeing all these different ships. Uh, the Riverside ship looks amazing as well. I'm, I've been looking at that amazing. And stop, stop talking about them because we'll, we'll end up booking one. Yeah. Um, and Riviera have got two brand new ships on the way that we yeah. saw a little preview of. 
um, and they look a, a step up again. So no, well, they're dining rooms on multiple tiers, isn't it? Two two tier dining rooms. So amazing for I think, such a small ship. The what, the way they're designing them and putting things in, it did look incredible. Yeah, for the small space that they have to work with because they are restricted on river cruises. That I think they're really pushing. I was going to say really pushing the boat out. <laughs> boom boom. <laughs> so they they're making some good innovations. Should we say? instead <laughs> uh, just a quick reminder if you are enjoying listening to myself and tom talk about all things cruise and river cruise and you're enjoying this video please consider pressing that like button very very much appreciated yeah and if you haven't subscribed yet please hit that subscribe button as well we are slowly 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 edging towards um, our next goal 8,000 subscribers so if you can help us on the way today we would very much appreciate it Okay, who else, what else have we got there? No. Although that's what I was saying, hi to Ken. <laughs> yeah, <that's it. laughs> oh, very okay, okay. So um our next cruise, because we have had a few questions about when our next cruise is gonna be, and we are get we're gonna let our Patreons know first, um, and then we shall let everybody else know. So if you do want to know what our next cruise is, um please consider joining our Patreon. Um, it's it's a way to find out exactly what we get up to behind the scenes. There's a video we popped on there yesterday because me and Dom had a little day out yesterday away from cruising. So if we, all our patrons know what we got up to yesterday as well. Plus all the little benefits, little short videos from our cruise itself. And uh, just little snippets, little extras that we we like to give to people that you know support us and uh, like us. So no, we very much appreciate <laughs> any support that and all support, all support. Thank you very much to those patrons as well. So um, now we've been talking about um, Easter and things, and we wanted to say about the two Easter cruises that we have been on. Mm -hmm. So we've been on two Easter cruises. Is, um, we've been on a Sky Princess, which is our first cruise action that we ever vlogged. So if you go back and look at that um, series, it's certainly interesting because it shows you how far we've come from the from what so we funny. from what we did <laughs> back <laughs> at our very first vlog. We're you coming up. We're coming up to our two year in June. In, I can't. I'll find out specifically the day in June. But that was the first time we posted a video or a vlog of us talking about our i think it was day two of sky princess series yeah and we re-watched it the other night and we were just laughing because <laughs> it does show a different how far we've come since well, we then. Th hopefully hopefully <laughs> it might look exactly the same <laughs> to everybody else um but oh we've got a sky princess question so it's from biker bars 100 which main restaurant did you prefer on sky princess so for us it was Ah, the, the one we chose was on deck five. Yeah. Or just off oh, the gosh. Princess Plaza. Just off the Princess Plaza. The yeah. Piazza on Sky. Yeah. Um, so it was, oh God, no, cello was the one above. Cello. Okay, now we're thinking. So it, we didn't go, we didn't dine in cello. We dined in the one below, but it was the one in the midship just off the main. And we had that, we pretty much, that was our main dining room room for the entire two weeks we were on sky yeah and we had lawrence we sat with we asked to sit in sort of a designated area because we got our way to his name lawrence, lawrence and yeah, he, yeah. he was incredible so we pretty much got to sit in his section of the restaurant every night didn't yeah we? yeah it was, it was really it was a fantastic cruise yeah we were just off. we were just because we, obviously it was at easter as well we were just reminiscing the other mm. I mean, just the other day because this is the first time in two years that we haven't been away for easter on a cruise over the easter weekend is yeah. yeah yeah so it's uh, definitely and then our next easter cruise last easter was with ambassador awesome. and again another fantastic cruise yeah biker bars soleil, that's soleil the one. yes that is the one thank you <laughs> yeah that's the one we preferred and uh it was great but in terms of the main dining restaurant because you've got that one and you've got is it cello the one above yeah and then is it the amalfi at Amal the back no i think that is enchanted, enchanted. but they've got one one at the back we never dined in that one at the back yeah um but no soleil was definitely our favorite restaurant the staff in there were incredible and don't be put off i'd say when you go on on um princess don't be put off by the first night because the first night is all, always busy. busy and it's a little bit chaotic and all our princess cruises majority of all our cruises anyway on the first night in the main dining room Mental. tends to be a bit of a 
a bit of a chaotic show, is very that? very busy some cruise lines actually give discounts i know royal caribbean will give uh you a discount if you book a speciality on the first on night, the first night uh, because you know everybody's excited for their cruise and Everybody wants to go for dinner roughly the same time. Yeah. And it can get so busy. And I think on in Sky and Enchanted, first night, there were big queues, yeah. even if you pre booked your reservation on the app. Yeah. Uh, whereas Island Princess, it was the opposite. Opposite. It was it was so well organized and calm. We arrived and we were seated straight straight away. Um, going to the Norwegian Fjords for two weeks on Sky so Princess. Princess. So we did this on Enchanted. Yes. So you'll have an incredible time. I mean, are you stopping all, off in, in Flom? In Flam, yeah. Love that, that's Flam. great. That was a beautiful, that's our favourite um, Norwegian port. Norwegian port. Um, but yes, Sky Princess in the fjords, it's going to be amazing. It, it's guaranteed, really, isn't it? That, that ship and the destination will work really well together. No. Really, really good yeah. cruise. Really good. Cruise. So I was just saying about before that, uh, our ambassador cruise. We had such a great time in ambassador. We cruised around the UK. Um, cruising around the UK seems to be quite popular. Quite popular, and um, the reason why we also uh, wrote an article for that in Sail Away magazine. We did. So we've talked all about cruising around the UK and the different ports. Because um, I think we did have a question about, oh, why have you wrote about cruising around the UK and because we've done it twice now. We've done around the UK twice on different ships. Um, we also cruise a lot around the UK, but not into many ports during um, just, after, just after COVID, wasn't it, where we didn't really stop. So, yeah, it's a, there's some really nice ports. We loved it in the Orkneys. We loved it in um, Falmouth, where we went last. That was pretty. That was a pretty little port. It was all decked up. They had flags and everything. Falmouth right? Week. Falmouth week it was ready for that so loved it there um I'm trying to think we went to Newcastle and we saw the that, angel of the north the angel of the north and we had a tour around Newcastle neither of us have ever been there before it was nope. really it was interesting interesting we've been to Liverpool, Liverpool in the Gordon in the Gordon it's oh good. in the Gordon was great because we went to Loch Ness well, we yeah, we did. Yeah, not now. So yeah, great. Isle of Sky. Yeah, it's a great way to see the UK. Even if you're from the UK, yeah. we would definitely recommend doing a UK places that are on your doorstep, but would take a little bit of planning and organisation yeah. to get there. Book book a cruise for seven, ten, twelve nights, and let them do the hard work. You can get off and explore. Um, but yes, so this is a, f a flam. Yeah. Went a few years ago with Celebrity and went on the ribboat experience. Oh. So our recommendation in Flam is not to do the railway, it's to hire yourself one of those electric twizzies. Is it yeah, twizzy? twizzy, which is an electric Incredible. mini car. Great. But yeah, we could see the boat, the ribboats, yeah. um, because the twizzy takes you on a sat-nav um, tour type yeah. of thing. So it tells you where to go. You drive through, through the fjords, up and right up into the, the mountains in this tiny um, electric licorice also. and then you can stand up there and look over and you can see for miles it's beautiful, beautiful. It's beautiful spectacular and they got two routes so we've done one next time we go to farm we will do the other route on yeah because it. it was just we just laughed yeah. the whole <laughs> the whole time <laughs> it was definitely so funny such a good experience it was really really best one of the best experiences yeah. we've done in that little electric but we do tourism. like a big boat now we've discovered that we, we like, a big, like boat. a big boat yeah Mm -hmm. Wear the correct things because uh, it's, you, cold. it's cold on a rib boat going at that speed. But we do like a rib boat experience as well. Holly, the British Isles cruises are absolutely stunning. They are got to see some incredible ports that we wouldn't even think of going to. No, no, um, it was beautiful, and the weather was nice. Well, yeah. most of it on last Easter was a little bit. Hit and yeah, we never made it to oh, the silly um or the Guernsey. channel lines yeah so we we'd have to do another cruise to try and do those as well so that would be on our list to do the next yeah i do a british another british, british Charles Charles cruise, cruise. Yeah. most probably yeah. push it to maybe a little bit later in the year so we could uh well you can never guarantee the weather here i'm afraid yeah yeah uh loch lomond um, was my highlight now we haven't done loch lomond no. that loch ness yeah and the castle on loch ness whose name escapes me oh Urquhart, Urquhart Castle, yes. Yeah. So um, that was brilliant. That it was, was really, really interesting. They had lots of people in sort of period, 
I was going to say fancy dress, <laughs> imperial Costume. costumes, and they would yeah. sort of walk you around the castle explaining what everything was. Um, incredible. And that, that was an organised ex, uh, excursion, excursion with, with Ambassador. ambassador. Really, yeah. really good. Really. I keep saying really, really. I know. Well, that's your last time you can say no, because we've hit the hour. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very oh, much. No. Oh, go on. Rose, going on a saga British Isles cruise in June. Oh, you'll have an incredible time. Unfortunately, um, we've still got to... I'd love to try saga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to be... I would love to try, try saga, because they pick you up from your door and take you. Well, apparently they are very good, but... But um, and it's supposed to be incredible, so I'm sure Rosie will have an incredible time. If we can sneak on, we'll try, we'll try and get, and get on, on a yeah. ship just to have a little look because um, we're not hit the age limit yet, so <laughs> halfway. No. But uh, well, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. If you haven't hit the like button yet, please hit that like button before you dash off. And secondly, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing to help us reach our next goal. But thank you very much for all your support, for chatting with us tonight, and have a wonderful easter weekend thank you very much well i can see oh hang on <laughs> i can see a really really t-shirt coming soon, soon. Really, perhaps you should really really, 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 yeah, really, really. That, that can be our that can be our slogan <laughs> <laughs> look out there'll be a really really t-shirt oh thank Dom's you on our next screen yeah, I'll be <laughs> on the next one. Um, thank you all uh, enjoy the rest of this beautiful bank holiday weekend yeah. and uh, try not to eat too many easter eggs yes have a great easter weekend thanks a lot bye bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye.